caught my attention about Warren Buffett. You know Warren Buffett, one of the world's most famous investors. Warren Buffett said, he's talking about himself. He said that he was probably one of the few people that he knew and he's in his mid 80s who actually dedicate time for thinking I'll say it again dedicate time for thinking why is this important it's really easy all life is about problems and solutions opportunities and the steps you make to take these opportunities to take good advantage of them that's what life is a series of problems and solutions and opportunities to do that properly and effectively and become as successful as Warren Buffett has been in investment or in any other domain you have to pay serious attention to the important process of thinking I have been a CEO a number of times and I've lived with CEOs you know much of my professional life and I've also trained and lectured and taught senior executive and CEOs and senior government officials guess what they don't have time to think most of them their schedule is so packed meeting to meeting to meeting 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 it's mostly about firefighting solving problems what I call living on a reactive mood it's just reactions and reactions and reactions and they think that the time they spend in a meeting is thinking time thinking time is different thinking is a serious process just like eating you can have a sandwich and you know grab a sandwich and eat when you're on your way or while you're running or walking that's fine but that's not proper eating proper eating requires a process you have to set up the table if you want to do it properly and really enjoy it set up the table cook proper food you know some music even without music create the ambience and the atmosphere so that you can enjoy the experience of eating to the fullest thinking is the same thing you need to dedicate time for thinking I can't see success serious success on any level of life in any task of life if you want to do serious thing if you don't think properly Number one, you dedicate time for thinking. Just like you have time for meeting, time for sleeping, time for exercise, sport, you dedicate time for thinking. Now, could be in the morning, the afternoon, the evening, it doesn't matter. After everybody has slept at home, you can, you know, do that. Or you wake up earlier than everybody else and do that. Or during the day, I used to, I'll share with you what I used to do. I used to ask my assistant, then stop all calls. I mean, no meetings, nothing. I used to, you know, dedicate part of my day that I want to think about something. I want to think about, you know, the next business plan, the marketing plan, our budget, our um, next uh, whatever uh, business uh, uh, venture, whatever it is. Serious thinking. So you dedicate time for that. You don't do it uh, on the go. It doesn't work like this. This is a serious time. Probably one of the most important ones. Second, number two, no distractions. It takes time to come up with a good idea. It takes time to build a chain of ideas. So you can't think when the phone rings every five or three minutes. You can't do that. When the door knocks, when somebody distracts you, you cannot do that. You isolate yourself in a way where nothing distracts you from the process of thinking. And how do you do that? It depends on the context, but you get what I mean. Number three, 
you take all the tools that you need with you. Some people use, you know, the whiteboard. Some people um, enjoy, you know, find it more uh, feasible or productive to write on a piece of paper. Some people use a napkin. Some people use digital, whatever, smartphone thing. Some people draw. Some people sketch. Some people think by sketching. Whatever tools you need, some people use post-its, whatever tools you personally, and it's a personal thing, you personally feel that they help you in thinking, you take them because they will help you think better. Four, get help. Sometimes we need somebody to help us in the process of thinking. Serious help. What do I mean by serious help? Somebody knows the role that they have to play in helping you thinking, like asking questions, like finding you know, blind spots, like challenging you, like, uh, like draw, giving you a counter argument, like, like, uh, like uh, whatever, like uh, helping you see more opportunities. So get proper help. Now, some of the help that you might need is somebody to listen. Sometimes when I want to think, I go to people and ask them, listen, I'm going to think loud now. I'm not asking for, for, for you to give me solutions. Just listen. Just sit next to me and listen. Because if you don't tell them that, the temptation is that they will give you solutions. And you don't want that. You just want to think about this. Because they will be slowing you down because they don't know what the subject is all about. So you ask them, can you just sit here and listen to what I'm saying? Abraham Lincoln used to do that. He used to invite some of his friends and they knew that he wanted to think loudly. So they, they, watched, they would just go there, sit in the office and listen. It would help him in the process of thinking. Next point, say it loud. When you say, when you talk about your ideas, that's why I said get somebody if you need help. When you're trying to explain your thinking to somebody else, just like teaching, you know, they say one of the best way to learn something or to master it is to teach it. So when you're trying to explain something to a listener, especially if it's a good listener, that helps you think. So say it loud, speak it out, because it takes a process and a long time until you elevate your thinking or you go deeper to the place that you want to go in terms of creativity or in terms of the validity and the depth of the solution itself. Next point, write it down. If it's not written, maybe it will, I don't know, it's like never existed. Because we forget, especially if it's a complicated thing, we forget to just write it down, take note, document it. If it's not written, it didn't happen. Write it down. Next point, make a plan. Because the world is full of thoughts and ideas. It's full of sorts of ideas. The ones that are not part of a plan that would lead to something are useless. So turn it into a process where that thinking would translate into something tangible, would translate into progress. Hmm. Another point, commit and decide. You've thought about something, you found out you know, solutions or you have a sense of direction of what you want to do. You wrote a plan, now commit to it. And commitment is about intention. There's an emotional thing into that. So commit, right? And decide that that's going to be my roadmap. That's going to be my, you know, the process to move ahead. Next point is act. Because all of that is useless if you don't put it into action. Action is louder than everything else, louder than words, louder than thoughts. Because as I said, all thoughts, ideas mean nothing if they're not translated into actual reality. And that's what action does. It translates thinking into reality. Last point is do it again. Do it again, because it will not stop here. Once you've done all these steps and you went back to reality and now you're into the action mode, guess what? A reality will teach you that maybe you missed something. Maybe you need to rethink something else. Maybe you need to refine your plan. So it's a continuous process. It's a non-stop process. 
So do it again. What do I mean by do it again? Dedicate another time, another time, another occasion, another day where you sit and revise everything and you do the corrections that need to be done. Bottom line, finding solutions requires serious thinking. Creating opportunities requires serious thinking. Self-leadership is all about that. Finding solutions to your problems and creating opportunities for progress. And that cannot happen without thinking because life is hard, life is complex and complicated. And shallow, superficial, reactive, impulsive thinking will get you nowhere. You have to take thinking very seriously. Only through that you will make progress. And that's what self-leadership is about. Mm -hmm.